so near but yet so far huh. a whole lot of things to unpack in what happened last night west indies west indies the end of the t20 world cup for us jaja our old enemy spin came back to attack us the batting was shambles the south africans they fed us a diet of spin and we did not respond too well. I tell you, it's, it's a tough one to take. It's a tough one to take. But what was a quarter final, you cannot go into scoring under 150 against a powerful team like South Africa and expecting to win. Our bowlers, they gave it a good go. They really gave it a good go. I mean, we saw some sloppiness in the field, but the bowlers gave it a go, my people. They really and truly gave it a go. Going to go through the scorecard. Going to talk a little bit about a couple of stuff that I saw while I was watching. Fortunately, I was able to watch the game from start to the end. Uh, we had some rain in between, and as a result of that, a couple of overs were shaved off. But prior to the whole rain thing, West Indies batted first. And we scored 135 for 8. 135 for 8 from 20 overs. No way on earth going into a T20 World Cup like this. And it's not like the first round where we got those pitches where... 120, 125, 130, you know, you could see it as a good score. No. 135, dark balls and wickets galore. All I can say is that we were once again bamboozled, outplayed, and outthought, if you can put it that way. Yes. The South Africans, they came up with their plan, and it really worked. I am imagining I am imagine that, uh, imagining that we had that they had their pace as there and we were thinking that we were gonna get them up front. Well, they assessed the wicket, they assessed the pitch, and they saw that spin is what was going to do it. And Rabada, one of the best bowlers bowler going around. He didn't come on until I think he was about over number 18. They gave us a good diet of spin. I'm going to stop the rambling and work my way through the scorecard. So 135 for 8. The change was Kyle Mayers for Johnson Charles. I gave my plane 11. And those who have been watching my channel for a long time will be able to attest to this. I believe in giving a man a chance when he has earned it. I have always said, a lot of these players, their batting style, I'm not a fan of it. And Johnson Charles is one of them. Not a fan of his batting style, but he was already seasoned in. And, you know, what I was saying was, listen, in the power play, outside of the power play, your role is to Attack. I don't want 35 from, 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 from 33 bars. Kyle Mayers came in for him. In a crucial game like this. And the same thing that I was saying that I don't want. That is what I got. Kyle Mayers 35 from 34. Batting in the power play. 35 from 34. She hope he didn't score this time around. Was looking to get himself loose and was out caught. Puran came, decided that he was going to take on the spinner straight away. Ball was there, but didn't work out for him. He was removed for one. Raston Chase, once again, proving his worth. Once again, proving a lot of people wrong. He earned his spot in this squad and, you know, I will talk about his experts with the ball further down, but with the bat, when wickets were tumbling around, all over, he stayed there, 
He played some good shots. He rotated the strike. Right? Raston Chase ended up getting 52 from 42. Three fours and two sixes. Strike rate of 123.81. I've always said that the stabilizer in the innings, I have time for them giving me 52 from 42, depending on the circumstance. Right? This was, this was the right time for that. And Raston Chase did just that. Applied himself. Unfortunately, the guys that were expected to bat around him, they didn't bat too long. Ravman Powell, we know his situation already when it comes on to batting spin. I have been preaching the same thing before the World Cup. If you are batting inside my top five or in my top six in a, in a team, and you are not bowling, you are not the wicket keeper, you are not doing anything, you need to be scoring runs. You are playing as a specialist batsman. Every time you come up against a spinner, you can't always look clueless and, and get bamboozled. I mean, not every time you know, we have seen him scored off spinners. But it can't be a case that, you go out, that, that, that so often you're going to get bamboozled. No, even see the ball, get drawn out your stump and get stuck. Um, or, or we crease and get stuck. So the captain wasn't able to contribute. Right? He made one as a matter of fact. Rutherford didn't score. Andre Russell, 15 from 9. Aki Lusain, 6 from 11. Now, this is not even hindsight. While I was watching the game, one ball remaining. And I thought that Russell was going to say, listen, Hussein, if you get a 4, take it. Get a 6, take it. But I need to be on strike for the next over. Man, them <laughs> Hussein played a ball and went straight for that single. So he would be on strike for the beginning of the next over. I mean, I'm not saying that Hussein cannot handle himself. I'm not saying that he cannot bat. But maybe I'm looking at it wrong. But while I was watching the game, my immediate thought was, even before the, the ball was bowled, final ball, do not, you don't need, at this, at this point, Russell had started to tee off. He was teeing off. So I really wanted him to start um, to face the sec, um, start to to, uh, to face the, the next over. Hussein played one straight to Naki, I think it was, and Russell, you know, didn't he, didn't put in the dive. <laughs> you understand? Probably a dive would have saved him. But um, personally, I don't think I, I don't think they needed to to have done that. Go for the four, and and it and it's basically the same thing that happened when South Africa were chasing. Right, Rabada had the last delivery of, 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 the, of the penultimate over. And uh, I am sure Jensen probably said to him, listen, if I get a four or a six, take it, but I need to face the, the, I need to be the one facing at the beginning of the next over. Unfortunately, Chase pushed one wide and Rabada struck it through the covers for four. Jensen was on strike for the beginning of Obed Makai's over. So that is what I was thinking when Russell was batting. But, you know, it is what it is. Hussein made six. Um, Alzari Joseph, he made a handy 11 from seven. Moti was left not out on four from seven. So 135 for eight. Right? 135 for eight. And it so happened that the rain came right after we took the first couple of wickets. And then it turned into a 17 over affair there now bowling for uh, south africa we had marco jensen two over 17 runs one wicket aiden markham four overs 28 runs one wicket bowling from the top bowling from the front spinner bowling bowling all four overs maharaj four overs 24 runs one wicket uh nakia four overs uh 26 runs didn't pick up any wickets uh, Shamsi, 4 overs, 27 runs, 3 wickets. Rabada, 2 overs, 11 runs, 1 wicket. Total team performance there from South Africa. I mean, they almost let it slip in the back end based on the work that we put in our bowlers. But good team performance there from South Africa. Right? They went out there. They were businesslike. They read the pitch well. They did all that, they, that needed to be done in terms of... Um, 
you know, rotating their bowlers, getting the spinners on, and, you know, they took care of business. So, 135 is all we must add. South Africa, they were given 123 to win, right? 123 to win based on the Duckworth Lewis system. They ended up on 124 for 7. Now, as I said, the West Indies bowlers, they did very, very well. They did extremely well, my people. To bring it right down to the last over there, they did well. Going into the last over, I think they needed, what, five? Obed Makai's first delivery went for six, so the game finished there. The first delivery from the 28th over. But to bring it down there was excellent. And I must say, hats off to Alzari and Raston Chase. Hats off to all the bowlers, because, I mean, it's a team effort. Hats off to, uh, to, to Andre Russell. He was excellent. But we just didn't have enough runs. 135 going up against that South Africa team is not what you want. All right? As much as our bowlers kept it tight, it just didn't work. Um, batting for South Africa, they had a couple of guys getting starts. But the good thing is we took wickets at regular intervals. Just didn't have enough runs to see us across. Um, Stubbs, he made 29 from 27. Klassen made 22 from 10. Marco Jensen, the bowling all-rounder, he stayed there. And he was the one that saw them across the line. He made 21 from 14. Um, Rabada, he was left not out on 5. Earlier, we saw um, Quinton Ducat getting 12 and Markram getting 18. Right, so that is how the batting went for South Africa. No bowling for the West Indies, Akil Hussein, three overs, 31 runs. Started off, started off well, but I think it was that third over that, you know, he sort of let it slip somewhat. Um, so that is how it went for, for, for them. <laughs> no bowling for the West Indies, Andre Russell, four overs, 19 runs, two wickets. Very, very good bowling. It's probably the last time we will see Russell in a West Indies jersey. I don't know. Probably the last time at a major tournament. Did well with the bat, with the ball. Right? Did extremely well with the ball. But as I said, um, that run out there is definitely, it was costly. I am thinking he was teeing off. At that time, the, the spinners were finished and they were just looking to bowl out the, the seamers. Rabba, um, Rabada. And, and, and Nakia, they were just looking to bowl the seamers. Russell had already taken them on and got a, got a couple of um, boundaries and things. So, you know, the way in which he, he got out there, it was really tough to take. Uh, Alzari Joseph, four overs, 25 runs, two wickets. Really and truly, I am proud of Alzari. Watching the game, I was like, come on, Alzari. You have to stand up. You have to stand up and be counted. And to see him bowl four overs, two wickets, 25 runs with his pace, controlling it. And, you know, whenever he, he, he bowled short pitch deliveries, they were well directed and they weren't wayward. So I am, you know, I, I have to say hats off to Azari Joseph. Goody Kishmoti, he had one over for 20 runs. Was a bit wayward, right? Bowl a couple of loose deliveries, not what we are used to from Moti. So even though this campaign is over, we're looking forward to seeing Moti continuing, um, moving on to bigger and better things. Obed Makai, 1.1 overs, 15 runs. Now, his first over, I think it ended up going for nine. But he had quite a few wides in there. I think he had about three wides in that first over. Right? So, never, never, never um, what we need. Wasn't what we needed at all. Um, Raston Chase now, the man that bowled us almost to victory. Three overs, 12 runs, three wickets. Right? And in that penultimate over there, penultimate over from Chase, he had a delivery there that actually went by the batsman and, you know, who's, uh, poor and wasn't able to collect. As a result of that, they, I think they got two. Right? They got two. And then uh, they got a four off his final delivery, which brought it down to five for, for, uh, to get from that um last over from obed mckay and as you can imagine we weren't able to to see it across the line so that is basically a recap of the scorecard my thoughts as it relates to the game we're gonna have to have a live show to unpack everything 
But when it comes on to this game, I just want to say congratulations to South Africa. They bowled well. I don't want it to seem as if our guys were out there batting and the South Africans were just throwing the ball like this, throwing the ball like this, and we failed to hit it. They came up with a plan, and the plan came together really well. It's well known, it's no secret that spin is something that um, we, are, we, we, we are afraid of. You understand? And it really came around to haunt us. Shamsi, we know he's a talented spinner. Man was ranked at number one for, for quite some time. I doubt he's anywhere. He, he's not there now. But, you know, he came in, to, uh, in last night's game and he really and truly um, gave us a nice little reminder of his quality. Right? He gave us a good reminder of his quality. Ended up um, getting the man of the match, actually, my people. That's, that's Shamsi. So, that is basically it for this one, my people. We're going to leave it right here for now. And we will definitely have a live show soon to unpack all of this. Just wanted to do this recap and talk about the game while it is fresh in my mind. I know there are probably a few things that I, am, that I missed. A couple of misfeel and, and, and all of that. But we will unpack that in another video or in a live show. Big up.